So a couple weeks ago, we started this series on Sundays that's taking us toward the cross. We're following Jesus uh, in that last couple of days through the last hours of his life before the cross. And uh, what we looked at Sunday has two of those kind of events that are unexpected. One of the events you'd never expect to happen, and it did. The other you're just sure would have happened, and it didn't. And both are still happening or not happening today. And yesterday I reminded you of the first. So here's the second that you would think would happen, but didn't then, and I'm afraid far too many times doesn't today. And we find this in Matthew or Mark 15, uh, beginning in verse 26. As the soldiers led him away, they see Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. That was yesterday in the first event. Uh, today, verse 27, a large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. And Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. Weep for your children. For the time will come when you will say, blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nurse. And then they'll say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. Verse 31, for if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it's dry? You know, decades ago at a senior high retreat at Round Lake Christian Assembly, which is the church camp I grew up going to, uh, Louis Weber, uh, the senior pastor at Oasis Christian Fellowship, was speaking about the crucifixion and some details surrounding it. And he told us something I'd never heard before and to this day still amazes me. Now on Sunday, I told you that there were two reasons that the Romans made those being crucified walk the Via Dolorosa. The first was so that a large number of people could see them and be intimidated by what was about to happen to them. The other was this. At this retreat, Louis said that there was a Roman law on the books that stood at the time that said, <clears throat> if anyone stepped out of the crowd when the victim was walking by and proclaimed his innocence, the proceedings would stop right then and there. The trial would begin again, and if the victim was found innocent, he would not be crucified. Well, listen, you know what that means, right? I mean, surely there was at least one person in that vast crowd of people who knew it was all a sham, who could have vouched for Jesus. All they had to do was step out of the crowd, stand up for Jesus, and the suffering of their friend, the suffering of the, the one who had healed them would have ended. But no one did. According to Louis, no one ever did. That law was never taken advantage of. From what he found in his studies, the law was never used even one time. Do you know why? Because the rest of the law said, if you stepped out on the crowd on behalf of the accused and he was retried and found guilty, you would be crucified next to him. And no one was willing to risk their life. Still happens today too, doesn't it? People that Jesus has helped, people that Jesus has healed, people that Jesus laid down his life for, sometimes are afraid to stand up for him. And maybe some of us are listening to this Devo this morning. Something to think about.